The Hugh Freedy Sidekick is a convenient device for the routine sharpening of periodontal scalers and curettes. With its battery-operated motor, it can be used anywhere in the dental office. Easy-to-use guides help you position the instrument and effectively sharpen the lateral sides of the blade to restore the cutting edges. The Sidekick easily fits into any drawer for storage in your operatory, sterilization room, or lab. Once the batteries are properly inserted, the next step is to install the ceramic stone into the Sidekick. First remove the stone from its package, then remove the guide plate screw and guide plate. Place the stone in the center of the holding clips and push it gently into position. The ceramic stone does not require lubrication for use. Attach the guide plate with the channels over the stone and slide the end to be flush with the top of the unit. Next, reattach the guide plate screw and tighten, then turn on the sidekick to check operation. On the guide plate, there are two channels and a toe guide for positioning different instruments. These channels are the key to creating sharp blade edges every time. The G channel is used for Gracie curettes, and the SU channel is used for sickle scalers and universal curettes. The circular opening is the toe guide and is used to sharpen the toe of either Gracie or universal curettes. Each channel has two areas of contact with the instrument. The back of the blade rests on the vertical backstop of the channels, and the terminal shank rests on the angled terminal shank guides. The sickle scalar blade is straight or curved with a pointed tip. The cross section is triangular, resulting in a pointed back. The junction of the face and lateral sides of the blade form the two cutting edges. When the blade becomes dull, both sides of the blade are sharpened to restore the cutting edges. To sharpen the sickle scaler and the sidekick, hold the scaler with a light, comfortable grasp and establish a fulcrum on the sidekick close to the top. Stabilize the sidekick by holding it gently with your other hand. To begin sharpening, turn on the sidekick and position the sickle scaler in the guide. To do this, position the blade in the SU channel guide. Place the middle of the back of the blade against the vertical backstop of the channel. Then rest the terminal shank against the angled terminal shank guide. In this position, the side of the blade will be against the stone for sharpening. The positioning of the sickle scaler is the same for a curved or straight blade. Apply gentle pressure to hold the blade in place and slowly move the blade forward and backward along the channel two to three times. Reposition the blade to sharpen the other side of the blade and repeat. Notice that the tip of the blade is pointed in the opposite direction. Do not apply too much pressure to the stone. This will cause unnecessary wear on the motor. Only gentle pressure is necessary to achieve sharpness. To check for sharpness, hold the sickle scaler in your dominant hand with the side of the blade against the stick and the terminal shank parallel to the test stick. Lean the cutting edge toward the test stick, applying moderate pressure. A sharp cutting edge will bite into the test stick. The universal curette has a curved blade and round toe. The cross section is semicircular, resulting in a round back. The junction of the face and the lateral sides form the two cutting edges. When the blade becomes dull, both sides of the blade are sharpened to restore the cutting edges. To sharpen the universal curette and the sidekick, hold the instrument with a light, comfortable grasp and establish a fulcrum on the sidekick close to the top. Stabilize the sidekick by holding it gently with your other hand. To begin sharpening, Turn on the sidekick and position the universal curette in the guide. To do this, position the blade into the SU channel guide. Place the middle of the back of the blade against the vertical backstop of the channel. Rest the terminal shank against the angled terminal shank guide. In this position, the side of the blade will be against the stone for sharpening. Apply gentle pressure to hold the blade in place and slowly move the blade forward and backward along the channel two to three times. Reposition the blade to sharpen the other side of the blade and repeat. It may be necessary to change your grasp and fulcrum position. Notice that the toe of the blade is pointed in the opposite direction. Do not apply too much pressure to the stone. This will cause unnecessary wear on the motor.
Only gentle pressure is necessary to achieve sharpness. To sharpen the toe of the blade, direct the toe into the toe guide on the guide plate. Keep the back of the toe against the side of the hole and move the blade forward and backward two to three times. To check for sharpness, hold the universal curette in your dominant hand with the side of the blade against the stick and the terminal shank parallel to the test stick. Lean the cutting edge toward the test stick, applying moderate pressure. A sharp cutting edge will bite into the test stick. Gracie curettes have a curved blade and round toe. The face of the blade is angled at 70 degrees to the terminal shank, rather than perpendicular to the shank. As a result, there's only one cutting edge formed by the lower aspect of the face and the lateral side. When the blade becomes dull, the lower cutting edge is sharpened to restore the cutting edge. To sharpen the Gracie curette and the sidekick, hold the instrument with a light, comfortable grasp and establish a fulcrum on the sidekick close to the top. Stabilize the sidekick by holding it gently with your other hand. To begin sharpening, turn on the sidekick and position the Gracie curette in the guide. To do this, position the blade into the G channel guide with the lower cutting edge directed towards the stone. Place the middle of the back of the blade against the vertical backstop of the channel. Rest the terminal shank against the angled terminal shank guide. In this position, the lateral side of the blade will be against the stone for sharpening. Apply gentle pressure to hold the blade in place and slowly move the blade forward and backward along the channel two to three times. Rotate the instrument to sharpen the opposite end and repeat. It may be necessary to change your grasp and fulcrum position. Notice that the toe of the blade is pointed in the opposite direction. Do not apply too much pressure to the stone. This will cause unnecessary wear on the motor. Only gentle pressure is necessary to achieve sharpness. To sharpen the toe of the blade, direct the toe into the toe guide on the guide plate. Keep the back of the toe against the side of the hole and move the blade forward and backward two to three times. To check for sharpness, hold the Gracie curette in your dominant hand with the side of the blade against the stick and the terminal shank parallel to the test stick. Apply moderate pressure. A sharp cutting edge will bite into the test stick. When using the channels in the sidekick, the stone is used in a particular area. To extend the life of the stone, you can reposition the guide plate to uncover a different area on the stone. Loosen the screw on the guide plate and move it forward or backward to expose another area on the stone. In addition, you can turn the stone around and reposition it gently in the clips, or you can remove the stone and then turn the stone over and use the other side for sharpening. The sidekick sharpening stone, guide plate, and guide plate screw can be removed for cleaning and sterilization. To do this, loosen and remove the screw and lift off the guide plate. Then remove the stone using dressing pliers to gently pry the edge of the stone from the clips. To hand clean the stone, the guide plate screw, and the guide plate, use a mild detergent and a small brush, or you can clean them in an ultrasonic cleaner. Putting them into a parts box will avoid any contact with instruments in the ultrasonic bath. The external surface and the stone fixture area of the sidekick can be wiped with a pH-neutral surface disinfectant, taking care not to saturate the switch area. The stone, guide plate, and screw can be heat sterilized by steam autoclave, chemical vapor, or dry heat, not to exceed 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius.